بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وصلى مبارك على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه أما بعد Tonight's lesson be in Allah Azza wa Jal we will begin a series explaining and discussing some of the basic and fundamental terms or that which pertains to ilm mustalah al hadith the science of hadith terminology ilm mustalah al hadith the science of the terminology of hadith this is a hadith this is an athar this is khabar this is mursal this is hasan uh, the muslim when he reads in a book that's not necessarily a hadith book such as Tafsir ibn Kathir or he reads a fatwa of uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz or he reads in the book of Sirah that uh, this is Mursal and this is an Athar and this is a Khabar so on and so forth what do the scholars of hadith intend by these terms what do they mean uh, so on and so forth so the book that I've selected will be the book uh, Tafsir Mustala al-Hadith which is translated to mean uh, the uh, science of hadith or the science of hadith terminology made easy which was authored by uh, Dr. Mahmoud Al-Tahan may Allah Azza wa reward him well on our behalf after the brief introduction the author he says نُبْذَةٌ تَرِيخِيَةٌ عَنْ نَشْأَةِ عِلْمِ الْمُصْطَلَحِ وَالْأَطْوَارِ الَّتِي مَرَّ بِهَا on page 11 he says a brief glimpse into the history in the chronological order of the development of the science of Mustalah. What was the history? What were the steps that led to its development? And also the different stages behind its evolution. Who started it? How did he start it? What were the first books? And what century? And what generation? The books were complete, were incomplete, so on and so forth. The author he says, يلاحظ الباحث المتفحص أن الأسس والأركان الأساسية لعلم الرواية ونقل الأخبار موجودة في الكتاب العزيز والسنة والسنة النبوية. He says uh, the one who researches and carefully looks and investigates can find the fundamental principles, can find the basic rules, can find the cornerstones or the foundations of the science of riwayah the science of narrating a hadith the, sire, the science of taking reports and news and information he finds that these foundations are in the Quran the Kitab of Allah Azza wa Jalla and the prophetic sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَقَدْ جَاءَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ قَالُهُ تَعَالَى يَا أَيُوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَنْ فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَنْ تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ he says an example of this is what is mentioned in the Quran when Allah the sublime the exalted says the verse which is translated to mean O you who believe if a fasiq if a rebellious wicked sinner comes to you with information فتبينوا, then clarify then investigate double check reassure that information and to see قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ lest you will afflict, lest you will uh, behave or apply ignorance to a people. فَتُسْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ And you will there be, uh, therefore you will be regretful and remorseful of what you did. The verse in Surah Al-Hujurat in the 6th chapter. Uh, so before we go on to the author's speech, it clearly shows us that Allah Azza wa has commanded us to verify information. When someone brings this information, uh, especially if the person is a fasiq, as a sinner, a sinful Muslim, then we just don't uh, take everything he says immediately, but we double check and we verify. And this, along with other verses in the Quran, um, are explained in a, another uh, another place, a more extensive lesson, clearly prove that a tathabut, aslan shar'i, that verifying information is a principle in the deen, in everything is a principle in the deen, let alone when it comes to something being halal or haram. The Prophet ﷺ said this or he did it. Allah the Mighty and Majestic has this attribute and this name or he does it. Then it's even more deserving for us to double check, to verify, to investigate, to look into the source. And this is done by uh, Ilm al-Hadith, 
uh, by grading the narrators, classifying the reports, so on and so forth. The author, um, he then says, وجاء في السنة يقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم نظر الله عن سمع منا شيئا فبلغه كما سمعه فرب مبلغا أوعى من سامع وفي رواية فرب حامل فقه إلى من أفقه منه ورب حامل فقه ليس بفقيه. He says as for the sunnah, then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said, may Allah brighten the face of a man who hears something from us and then passes it on to someone else. For perhaps the one who receives the information secondhand will understand it and comprehend it more than the one who directly heard it. And perhaps uh, a person who has fiqh, who bears fiqh, will go to someone who has even more fiqh than him, has more understanding and comprehension than he does. And it says in another version of the hadith, the author says, And perhaps one who bears fiqh, one who carries fiqh, who busies himself and attributes himself to fiqh, has no fiqh whatsoever. He has no fiqh whatsoever. ففي هذه الآية الكريمة وهذا الحديث الشريف مبدأ التثبت في أخذ الأخبار وكيفية ضبطها بالانتباه لها ووعيها والتدقيق في نقلها للآخرين. He says so therefore in that verse that we quoted and in this uh, noble hadith uh, it shows us or it is the precept the foundation of the institution of a tathabbut of clarifying and verifying informations and how to precisely memorize those informations and understand them and comprehend them and then pass them on to others and then pass them on to others. Uh, that hadith that the author quoted, there's several other versions of the hadith. Uh, and from those versions is the one that says, نَظَرَ اللَّهُ مُرْعًا سَمِعَ مَقَالَتِي فَوَعَاهَا May Allah bless the man, may Allah brighten the face of a man who hears my statement, who hears my hadith and he memorizes it. And this version gives an even clearer meaning. That he hears it when he makes why He totally grabs that statement. He takes that hadith, he sucks it up, and he understands it. And then he passes it on just as he heard it. He passes on what he memorized just as he heard it. Meaning that he memorized it and he had it precisely down packed. He didn't make an error. He didn't distort the information. But he, 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 he absorbed that hadith with his heart and with his ears. So that clearly proves that the Prophet ﷺ made dua, and his dua, bi'ithnillah, is accepted dua, and it's a blessed dua. He made dua for those who hear, who memorize, and who take it in as a whole piece, and then they pass it on precisely as they heard it. The author then uh, says, وَمْتِثَالًا لِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقد كان الصحابة رضي الله عنهم يتثبتون في نقل الأخبار وقبولها لا سيما إذا شكوا في الصدق الناقل لها فظهر بناء على هذا موضوع الإسناد وقيمته في قبول الأخبار أو ردها. He says um, also uh, this he says this is complying to the command of Allah the Exalted and of His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and also what the companions used to do may Allah be well pleased with them. They used to verify information, they used to double check, especially if it was something that they had doubt about. If they doubt, if they doubted the truthfulness of the one who brought them the report, the reporter, uh, maybe. Or he brought something that was strange or peculiar or something that was against what was well known and established in them, they had doubt and they double checked and they verified the information. The author says, so with this, it becomes clear to us the topic of the Isnad. The chain of narration, the chain of reporters, and its value, and its worth, that it's a valuable thing. That uh, Allah Azza wa uh, allowed the, his slaves, his chosen slaves, to guard and to preserve the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَدْ جَاءَ فِي فِي مُقَدَّمَةِ صَحِيْهِ مُسْلِمْ عَنْ إِبْنِ سِرِينَ قَالَ لَمْ يَكُونُوا يَسْأَلُونَ عَنَ الْإِسْنَادِ فَلَمَّا وَاقَعَتِ الْفِتْنَةُ قَالُوا سَمُّوا لَنَا رِجَالَكُمْ فَيُنْظَرُ إِلَى أَهْلِ السُّنَّةِ فَيُؤْخَذُ حَدِيثُهُمْ وَيُنْظَرُ إِلَى أَهْلِ الْبِدَعِ فَلَا يُؤْخَذُ حَدِيثُهُمْ He says there's a hadith in Sahih Muslim, or excuse me, a narration in Sahih Muslim and the introduction of his book from Muhammad ibn Sirin uh, that he said the, they never used to ask about the Isnad they never asked about the Isnad but when the fitna took place, when the fitna happened uh, they said, name us, tell us your men Tell us who'd you, hear, who'd you hear this from? Where did you get this from? 
So therefore, they will look towards the people of the Sunnah, and the Hadith will be accepted, and they will look towards the people of Bid'ah, of innovations, and their Hadith would not be accepted. Bidnillah Azza wa Jalla, we will continue in our next session. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us beneficial knowledge and righteous action. Wallahu Azza wa Jalla alam, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam barak, ala abdihi wa rasulihi, nabiyina Muhammad. Stop it, please. I'm dramatic. <laughs>